producer too? Well, actually, I'm a playwright producer. Okay. Yeah. Are you so? Are you in the play? I'm not in the play. All right. So you are the writer producer. Of That's the correct. Play. Yeah. And and this play is a little different than regular plays because. It's like place for the ADD generation. <laughs> is that what it is? That that's one way to think about it. So it's um it's five ten minute plays um, that I wrote over the last seven years, and um, each play is a ten minute play. And so so there's is there a common thread, or are they all totally different? Well, one common thread is that there are moments that are real and surreal, um, in several of the plays, um, for sure. Um, but in terms of themes, you know, they're both comedies, they're dramas. And um, and from lots of different points of view. Interesting. Now, when did you know you were a playwright? Uh, so when I was 17, I wrote my first full-length play in uh, nine consecutive nights, and I. Did you do speed? <laughs> I did not. Really? No. Did you drink a lot of coffee? No. <laughs> you just were on a. Did you feel like you channeled it? Like, did it choose you? Like. So, so I had done this program called New Voices for the Theater the year before as an actor. Okay. And so, um, so and I was a teenager, and I thought, wow, that's so cool that on the other side, the, these folks are getting to actually get this workshop and get their plays produced. And so, even though I was there acting that summer, I went home and thought, oh, I'll try this myself. And I had an idea ah. for a play. I wrote a full-length play. What was the name of that? For, it was called Fort Camille. Okay. And that's the first play that I ever wrote. And um, it was done at New Voices for the Theater. So it was done. It was done. That was, how did that feel, like having a, something you wrote, like actually see it perform? Um, amazing. Amazing. Like, how long it was, was it? Um, it was about 90 minutes. Wow. Yeah, it was a full-length play. Oh, and something very cool is that this summer, I'm going to be the playwright in residence at that program that exactly 20 wow. years ago. Wow. When I was a teenager. That's giant. Yeah, wow. that I had the play produced. Wow, so you will be like a total living inspiration mm -hmm. to all the people there showing that it can work. I hope so. Well, it's true. It's almost like completing your circle, too, because you were there, and then you got it, you've done your whole thing, and all of a sudden, boom, here yeah. you are again. And that's yeah. pretty awesome. And now, and what's the name of the play that's doing that you're doing right now? So what we're doing is called Sharon Shorts. Right, so it's it's five different 10 minute plays. So do they each have their own name? They each have their own name. So can you tell us? I'd love to tell you the yeah, names of those. Okay, it. so the five plays are uh, Wish You Were Here, My Love. And what's that one about? So that one's about a 1953 um, This Is Your Life episode. And how many characters are in it? That play actually has the most characters oh. of, of any of the plays. Do the characters overlap? Or like, do the same actors go in each play? or? Well, there are some actors who have one role, and there are some actors who have multiple okay. roles. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So but that one has how many? That one has um, all of most of the actors in in the play, so seven. Okay. And and some of them actually play multiple roles in that play. Um, and that is actually um, th that piece is inspired by a true story okay. um, about Hannah Block Conner. Um, who was the first Holocaust survivor who ever had wow. a story on national television? Wow! But believe it or not, it's also this is also a comedy. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> because what it does is it shows the absurdity of um, the way that Ralph Edwards treated her, and um, so it shows sort of what was going on in the culture during that time. Wow. So do they wear like old-looking clothing? Like from is it period? You know. We have, we are suggesting the period. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So the next one. <laughs> okay. So that was wish you were here. The next one that I'll talk about. How many about. lines though? I'm just, I'm so curious because how many lines are in a 10 minute play? That's a great question. So the basic rule of thumb is that for every is page, it like a haiku <laughs> in a play form? You know, like <laughs> that's such a good question. So every page is about a minute. So a 10 minute play is about 10 pages. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. And um, maybe I'll just interject and also tell you that something I love about 10 minute plays is that unlike a skit or a sketch, they really have to have all of the irony and grit and life that you would have in a full length play, if it's really a play. Right. Otherwise it's a skit or a sketch. It's like, like we're songwriters. Oh yeah? So like a song is like could be a play. It's like a video. Absolutely. I try it's to tell story. stories with my song too. Yeah, so like these 10 minute plays are interesting because they're almost like 
like they could be a video or yeah. a short film or you know, mm -hmm. but you need that peak. And you, isn't there like words for this? Like you have to have the beginning, the, the mm -hmm. what's that no. word? Yeah, the middle, <laughs> the middle is yeah. a word for it. Or like the climax. The climax, <laughs> yeah. Or the climax. dramatic action moving yeah. up to and then And then the end, right? Right, right. Absolutely. So they all have it. They all have it. So what's that. the next one? Okay, so the next one we'll talk about is the match. Okay. And that's a two person play. Okay. And um, in that play, it's inspired by the character Laertes and Hamlet. Ah, yes, Shakespeare always comes up more than once. Whenever his name comes up, it's always more than once. It's the six degrees of uh, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. So there's that one. And um, and that one has a lot of male energy, which is different than the other plays, but it's a very much a male energy play, for sure. Um, the next one I'll talk about is Penny 17, and that's two women, and it's about a 30-year-old who's painting herself when she was 17. Wow. And so kind of the rule of the play is that while the 10 minutes is going on, the painting is alive, and they get to kind of have a discussion. So the old her and the present her. Yeah. That's actually really cool. That's yeah. really, really cool. A it's lot like Dorian people. Gray almost, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of people have really related to that play, sort of regardless of the age. Yeah. You know, yeah. of being able to look back at your life. And for me, now that I'm beyond 30, I'm looking back and with perspective at 30, going, oh, that's interesting she was thinking, because I wrote that when I was 30 years old. Right. Ah, my grandmother used to tell me, though, even when she was in her 80s, I mean, she had the best thing. She used to say, for birthdays, she'd say, once you turn 30, you're 30 till you're 40, you're 40 <laughs> till you're 50, you're 50 till you're 60, that's and great. decade by decade. When she was in her 80s, she told me that every time she'd look in the mirror, she sees the 20 year old and then no no she doesn't she feels like the same person but when she looks in the mirror mm -hmm. right she realizes she's not that person mm -hmm. but um yeah that's what that's almost making me think of mm -hmm. you know the 17 year old is, but you're different you are yeah. different experience wise right but you really are the same person yeah it's true. so interesting right, right. I, well i'm going saturday to I'm see so this play i'm so coming. excited <laughs> now that i even have more what else okay so the next one is called Occupy, and that was inspired by the Occupy movement. It was also inspired by um, some fees that we were unaware of on our bank account. My roommate and I have a joint account, and we have um, we have this four dollar fee that we did not know about. So it was more of a givings account than a savings account. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> and you have to fight for every penny. Exactly. And so it that's makes your you play. scratch your head, like, wait a minute. Why are you taking money from my savings? You're already getting this much right. profit. Right. Every right. bill, I feel, is a freaking spike. You're penalizing me right. for saving money? And yeah. if you're not on top of it, right. you're just going to... Yeah. So that's when it's about that. That's It's about that. And it, it's really about like the little gal getting her say. Like going into the bank and having her say over Good for her. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And so um, the last one we'll talk about is called Seriously, S-I-R-I. -I. Okay, and that's radio? Serious radio? <laughs> well, like, seriously on our iPhones. Oh, <laughs> yes. Siri. Siri. Oh. Seriously. All right. Yes. All right. And so this one is about our kind of collective love affair slash addiction with technology and, yeah. and how that divides us and, and how we do have a love affair with our technology. Yeah. And it's a fun comedy. And that's, nice. the, that's the last one of the evening. So we've got to end it with a good comedy. Wow, that's really awesome. Yeah. So tell us, where is the play happening? What are the dates and sure. all that stuff? Sure, so it's at the Robert Moss Theater. And um, this is and it's part of Planet Connections, um, the festival. Okay. And so if those shows that we have left are tonight. Yay. Tonight. At nine o'clock, uh, Saturday, June eighth at two. Monday. That's what I'm going to. Yay! Yeah. If you want to see Ruth on uh, Saturday, I'm so excited. <laughs> and um, also Monday, June tenth at nine. Friday, June fourteenth at nine. And Saturday, June fifteenth at seven. Wow, that's a lot of production. It's great. That's really good. And I'm going to be at every. <coughs> and 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 how long is it from beginning to end? It's about an hour. Oh, for all five. Yes. Yeah, so there's no intermission. You know, five, ten minute plays, and so there's, you know, a little transition, so we could say about an hour. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and that's 440 Lafayette. That's right. Uh, upstairs? Yes. And yeah. all it's just across the street from the public theater. Yes. It's, yeah, there's a lot of things in that building. Yeah. There. The Robert Moss is on the third floor. Okay. Yeah. 
so you should check it out. Is there a website? Um, well, I'll tell you my website, because okay. you can get tickets right through there. All right. So it's uh, SharonECooper.com. Um, and I also already have a great review, um, NewYorkTheater.com, which is Excellent. great. I also, can I mention one or two other Please. things? Yes. Fantastic. Um, so one thing I wanted to say is that my actors are extraordinary. Okay. You know, and so from a playwriting point of view, to have amazing people performing your work. Did um, you cast them? You know, it was a, it was a combination. Um, since I was a co-producer with Joanna Strange, who's also my director, who also did an amazing job. And, you know, I've written these plays over seven years, but she has interpreted and directed them in this very short period of time wow. in a beautiful way that makes the entire night cohesive. Right. Um, the other thing I'd love to mention is that all of these plays were written as part of, um, I'm in a theater company called Cry Havoc. And, um, and all of the plays were either written or rewritten in that theater company. Wow, that's so cool. So Where are you from? Well, I was born in Massachusetts, okay. raised in Virginia, and I've been in New York for about a dozen years. Wow, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you went north, south, middle. Right. There you go. And I'm a New Yorker now. That, well, you know, if you can't leave, then you, <laughs> you know. You can't leave. Yeah, yeah you if can't. you are a New Yorker. Yeah, it's absolutely. not your fault you weren't born here. But it, it is <laughs> Very your, true. Right, you can't help that. But when you come and you know it's you, right. it changes everything, right? Absolutely. So we do have a little thing. It is National Gingerbread Day. Oh, okay. We have ginger cookies for you. Oh, that's it's so when nice. you share a skeleton from your closet. Okay, okay. I have one. Oh, good. You ready? Yeah. I have a huge ketchup phobia. Ah, yes, it's true. A ketchup food. Ketchup. Yeah. You know, I don't eat um, my pizza. I have to have white pizza. Ah. If I have pasta, it has to have, you know, like garlic oil. Exactly, like something like that. Right if that's right. But that's not ketchup. I know, but you know, any kind, any, kind of tomato tomato sauce. Sauce. any kind of tomato sauce. So like, anything hold like the that. sauce. Hold the red sauce. Hold the red sauce. So what about the sriracha, like, freaking fades of life that everybody's using? <laughs> Can you not use that? Yeah, I think I'd probably skip it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen a chat? Barbecue seen chips? Yeah. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I think I would probably skip the barbecue chips. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? I've heard of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. You might really tomatoes. enjoy it because you got the tomato thing. It, I know, but I might, be, I might be too scared. No. Well, these are ginger. ginger these have comedy. no ketchup in it. It's a good thing it's not National Ketchup Day. I know. I mean, like, if there were French fries on the table, I wouldn't want to have ketchup on the table. Yeah, I don't really like, I'm, I'm more a mustard person. Are you? Yeah, I love mustard, but I don't have a phobia of ketchup. So, like, in, in any films, you know, sometimes they use ketchup, I think, for blood. What would you do? I would step out of the room. <laughs> you wouldn't be in that movie. I would you not be in the movie for that? Well, given up, up, exactly. <laughs> given up the playwright, right? I, I would it out. Or I could just say I would live with it. You know. Yeah. If the movie were. So, do you have playwrights that that inspire you? Like, who who, who does inspire you? Uh, a lot of people. Um, I mean, one person comes to mind is Tony Kushner. Um, also, uh, Tracy Letts, who wrote August Osage County. Um, and what's interesting is that August Osage County is was three acts in like three hours. You know, so a great play is a great play, right? right? So right. it's like I believe that these ten minute plays are great plays. Of course. You know, but eight but and. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the idea of a great play, if if it's really working, you'll want to watch yeah. three hours yeah, of it. Yeah, it goes fast. It's like I could watch that play all day long. Right. So um, are you watching the Tony? I will be. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So is that an aspiration for you to get to Broadway ever? Well, I certainly wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> have you been lately? Um, have I seen any shows yeah. recently? I, you know, I hadn't seen once, and so um, I was able to see that about a month ago. And Did you like it? It's a it? lovely show. If anyone goes, you want to get there early, like a half hour early, because you get to actually go up on the stage, ah. and the performers are actually playing the instrument and wow. you can be up on the stage with them. Nice, nice. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming. Thank Any you. last shout outs? I think I got Steven. them all. Thank you, Steven. Thank you, Steven. Of course, yes. thank you, Steven. Yes, and um, I'll see you Saturday. Awesome, I can't wait. Me too, all thanks right. so much. Thank you. All right, we'll be back. We have more on this happy birthday, Josie. <laughs> and happy birthday, Ruth. <laughs> Is it your birthday? Oh,